Now I've taken a sample of water while I've been draining down and I've put it into my turbidity tube. Looking at the colour of this water, it's pretty clear. So there's no magnetite seems to be floating around in this system, but obviously I don't know whether any inhibitor has been put into this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my eye test first uh, to check the corrosion levels and to see whether there is actually any inhibitor in the old system. Now I've done a full video on the eye test and I will leave a link in the description below so you can watch that after you've watched this if you want to see the full test. Now first thing I need to do is open the app on my smartphone and start the test. It now says I have got a pack of 10 and I've not quite used them all yet, so I can press OK. It now says the address and the location of where I am is found my address straight away. Brilliant, I don't know how it does it. Well, it does it off your GPS, off your phone, but it does it pretty quick. My reason for the test is because it's a new system and a new boiler. So press OK. Now, first thing I need to do is I've cleaned this little, um, probe and I need to put it into this head. Now when I stick it into the head this light should go blue. Now it doesn't matter which way round whether you put the copper first or the steel but obviously that needs to go in there and this needs to flash and it needs to find it. So it says battery level is low replace battery when possible. Oh, oh that's a bit of a waiting for valid readings. So what I have to do with this now is, I have to place it in this water, and this will now send a signal to the app. Now this is just tap water. That's all it is, just tap water. And what it's gonna do is, it's going to calibrate the machine for me, or the little, I don't know what you call these. Are they probes? Anyway, the little probes and see what the quality of the water is to start off with. I also need to pour some of this into this other, like that. It now says dry off the probe. So what we're gonna do is we have to dry it off a little bit and then we need to start the test and place it into here and again it will send a signal over to my phone and this is going to take four minutes so i'll get back to you after the four minutes and we'll see what the results are from the old water in the system but remember it looked pretty clean but it didn't have a filter on the system and i know nothing about this central heating system at all so it's time for a coffee and I've got three and a half minutes to wait. You can hear the dog snoring. <laughs> Pet, shut up. Tied him out on the walk before. So, we've now got the results in from the test. It actually says there's no corrosion protection found. And you can see the line is uh, pretty flat. So even though the water looks crystal clear, there is actually no inhibitor in here. But, there mustn't have been any air in the system neither because we've got no corrosion. There's no magnetite in the system when I drained down. The water was crystal clear from start to finish when I drained it. But this does prove that there isn't anything in there. Now, let's take that out of there. I'm gonna pull that off so that turns itself off because the battery's pretty going flat. Now, I've also got these Fernox Express inhibitor test strips. So I'm just gonna try one of these and see if there is actually any showing up on these. So I'm just gonna put that into the water, wait for two seconds, put it down, and then we can check on the side of here to see if there actually is any inhibitor in the system. Just gotta wait a minute now. I can finish my brew. Now according to these Fernox test strips, you can see there is a little bit of inhibitor in there, but nothing spectacular. There isn't anything at all. So what I'm gonna do is, while I'm commissioning this system today, I'm gonna to have to put some inhibitor in there. Now I am going to be changing 
a couple of the radiators and I'm going to be changing some of the thermostatic radiator valves as well on this system but I can always put some more inhibitor once I've drained it again because I don't know how long that's going to be soon hopefully now let's get on and commission this boiler and get some inhibitor in and do the rest of the test to the benchmark and the manufacturer's instructions <laughs> That's the terminal guard done. That's all the installation done by the legging. So let's get a tightness test done. Now that's the tightness test done. I will do a full video soon about doing tightness testing with LPG, starting from the tank down at the bottom of the garden. So I can now get my test nipple back in. Get the gas purge through now and uh, start commissioning the boiler. Now when you first turn the boiler on, it goes into a purge cycle. And there is also a vent here at the top to vent the heat exchanger, which actually goes down into the trap, which is a nifty idea. And this can run for up to six minutes. But if you want to stop it, we can press this button here, which is our central heating and hot water button, and it will stop it. Or if you do want to put it back into purge mode again, you can just press and hold the button. and it will go back in the purge mode. So it will run the pump and the diverter valve into the mid position and run the water around the heat exchanger to try and get rid of any of the air. So that's the purge sequence when you first turn on the boiler. Now time to flue gas analyze. Now according to the manual for G31 LPG, we need our CO2 to be between 9.5 and 10.5. So let's get the boiler on maximum and minimum and see what we get. So again, I'm using my TPI DC710 on my smartphone and I've got the setting in minimum setting and I'm on the left hand port, which is the analyzing port. So first thing I need to do now is, now I've got it in minimum mode. It's, it has been running a little while now, this boiler. I'm going to put the pump on, which you can do from your phone, and uh, let's see what readings we get. So a low setting, at the moment, I've got a CO2 of 10%, but no CO, so no ratio. So, <laughs> that's unusual, isn't it, that it's not making any CO. Anyway. That's what it's doing on minimum setting, CO of zero, CO2 of 10% with no ratio because obviously it needs a CO and a CO2 to make a ratio. So at least the CO2 readings within the manufacturer's book. Let's put it on maximum. So now we're on maximum. We've got to wait till we get a stable reading and we're pretty stable now. The uh, CO2 has stayed pretty stable at 10.2 and the CO keeps flickering between 180 and 175 so uh, that's pretty much what we've got now I've just gone back and checked it on minimum setting because I didn't like that it was reading zero uh, CO and it actually is still reading zero CO so it's no CO 10.2 CO uh, 2 and no ratio because it needs like I say the CO and the CO2 to make a ratio so that's that test done we need to do flue integrity now all these tests need to have the casing on according to the manufacturer but every boiler when you're doing flue integrity the casing will need to be on so I've moved over to the right hand port for the flue integrity we're on minimum 
running at the moment we've got no CO, no CO2 and an oxygen reading of 20.9 we can't get better than that so let's put it in maximum and yes boiler has been running now quite a while in our maximum rate and we've still got the same we've got zero CO, zero CO2 and 20.9 for our oxygen so the flue system's good and so is the flue gas analyzing. So let's get our inlet pressures done now. Now this Ariston comes with a test mode which gives you a maximum central heating output, maximum hot water demand and minimum setting. So with just the radiator showing here, that is our maximum central heating mode and we've got an inlet pressure of 32.4. Now, if I remember correctly, this can go down to 31, I think. According to the training manuals I've got, I'm sure it can have an inlet pressure at this test valve of a minimum of 30 or 31 millibars. We've got 32.4. Let's put it onto the maximum setting. So this would be the maximum demand. Now, because this is LPG, I don't need to gas rate it because I've got a gas meter and I can test this by just turning my hot tap on but if I get my readings here on maximum central heating and maximum hot water then I should be fine so it's gone on to maximum output now and we're at 32.1 so inlet pressures are good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let the central heating run round then I can do my uh, flow return temperatures And don't forget, if you've done a test nipple, make sure you check it with LDF that it isn't leaking. Now the last test I need to do with my analyzer, now the casing's back on, is do the sweep test. Where I'll go around the casing, I'll go around the turret and the test point for the analyzer points. And I'm looking for a CO of less than 10 parts per million C of the CO. And it's a two minute test. So that's the test completed. And it's zero. So that's good news. So that's the last I need to do now using the analyzer. Now, set up with my flow and return temperatures on the DC710. And it's coming out with a flow temperature of 52.4 and a return temperature of 44.9. Now I've only set, which we should do now, of a flow temperature of 55 degrees. Now, I haven't balanced any radiators yet. And I have sized all the radiators for this house running at 55 degrees. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But at the moment, everything's been running. Obviously I've done flue gas analysing and stuff like that. But my flow temperature is 52.5, my return temperature is 44.9, with a difference of uh, 7.5. Now, because my flow temperature is at 55 degrees, my return temperature is going to come back lower than 55 degrees, so this boiler will always be in condensing mode as long as I'm lower than 55. So, balancing the radiators is going to be a massive task, but again, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now that's all the commissioning done at the boiler. Now I've got all the commissioning to do at the taps and stuff. So let's go and check the taps for my flow rates, uh, my inlet cold water temperature, and find out what's going on there to see whether this boiler is producing what we want. Now this is the tap on the wash basin in the main bathroom where the stop tap is. So bar the bath, which is just behind me, this is the nearest tap and the easiest one to film from. So let's get the cold water on and let's see what the flow rate through this tap is. So, I don't know whether you can see that, it's looking about 11 litres. So let's see what the temperature at this tap is. We'll need to run it for a little while. 
but like I say it's the closest one to the main stop tap. So 8.6 on the coal coming in, now it is December now so you expect that coming in. So let's now change it to the hot tap. Now I have set the boiler to maximum to 60 degrees on the boiler because my wife likes to take her skin off when she gets in the bath and she wants it at that temperature. I've tried setting it to 48 and she won't have it. Anyway, let's uh, see what our flow rate is coming through this tap now with the boiler running. Now again, it's round about 11 litres. So you can see there we've hit 50 degrees. 51 degrees. So this wash basin is giving us about 53 degrees at 11 litres a minute. So let's try the kitchen sink tap now to see if we get any changes there. So again, we're at the kitchen sink. Let's try the cold water first. So again, we've got a flow rate of around 11 litres. And if I put this in, let's see what the cold water temperature gets to here. So we're around about 9.4, 9.5 degrees here. 9.3 now, which you would expect because the cold water is coming through the house. So it's not going to be as cold as the one coming in. So it's really important that you find the first tap when it comes into the house to be able to get your accurate cold water temperature. So let's see what the hot water gets to at this kitchen sink. Now we've got slightly less on the flow rate here. Looks more like 8 litres at the moment for this tap. So let's see what this one gets. Oh, hang on. <laughs> no, we've not. We suddenly jumped up to 11 litres again. And there's the 53 again. So, cold water temperature is slightly different. Hot water temperature, pretty much the same. Let's, let, let's try the last tap in the ensuite. Now, you can see the tap in the ensuite is one of these rubbish waterfall taps. So the flow rate's not that good at this one. So again, if I do the cold water, the flow rate on this <laughs> is about four litres. Because obviously you can't have it too fast coming out because you get wet. Yeah, so it's about four litres. So let's try the cold water temperature again. And this goes right the way across the loft. Now I can't find the pipes. So, not the way to go. <laughs> you can tell our water's pumped, can't you? Because we've now jumped up once the tap gets running. We've now jumped up to six, six litres it's coming out now. <laughs> it's a bit weird how it does that, but there you go. So, we've got nine point four degrees C at our cold tap in the bathroom and it's about 6 litres what's coming out with 9.2 degrees so let's try the hot tap so we're at the 52 we've got to 53 so we're at 53 now. Now I'm not expecting this to go a little bit more because the flow rate's so much lower. So it's at 54.9 degrees C and pretty much staying there. Oh, we've hit the 55 now. So that's the flow rates we've got at all our different taps in the house. Now when I'm commissioning a boiler I always make sure I test all the different flow rates because the benchmark does say test all the outlets. But it's important that you know which one is the first cold coming in because that will always be the coldest water in the house. 
So that's our flow rate and temperature rise at the tap. So we can fill that in in the benchmark book. Now we're going to put this Furnox inhibitor into this towel rad in the ensuite through the bleed here. First of all, I've got to isolate the two valves down at the bottom, drain some of the water out and tip it into here once I've removed this bleed. Now, normally I would put this into the magnetic filter, but because of the filter I've chosen from Trapex, I can't pull this in. So this is the next easiest way of doing it. I could have chose any radiator, it's just that this is the easiest one to pour it into. So hopefully now I have let enough water out to be able to get all the inhibitor in. What I like to do now is just fill it up with a bit of water to make sure I've got it all out. And there you go, it's full to the top. Now I can put the bleed back in. And open the valves below and that should be full and back up and running with inhibitor in the system. Now there's two hours of my life I'm never going to get back lagging the pipes. Let's just see if the magnet has collected any debris. So the first thing we need to do is turn these valves off. So, that's what the magnet has picked up, just circulating around for a few hours, which is uh, quite disturbing considering the uh, water was pretty clean, but uh, the magnet's done its job. So I will be doing a full flush on this and I will be doing a magnet cleanse on it. So uh, I'll go and clean this, put it back for now and uh, top everything back up again. So last test, safety devices, I've actually got the hot tap running. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn off the gas supply under here. And then this should go SP1, SP2, SP3, and then it should lock out. And there you go, 501, it's got no gas. All I need to do now is turn back on the gas supply, press the reset button. And away it goes. Now, I have just spent another hour sizing all the radiators in my house to see if they will work on this flow uh, temperature of 55 degrees. So we're in the kitchen dining room, we'll start here and the radiator's just here. Now, this room with a flow rate of 55 degrees requires 5,353 BTUs. This radiator I'm giving out with the correction factor for this radiator was set up for a uh, flow rate of 75 degrees, was 4,262, so it doesn't work. Now, our master bedroom, which is just here, again, we require 2,863 BTUs, but the radiator with the correction factor gives us 2,130. So that doesn't work neither. Now, bedroom number three, which is down there, the spare bedroom, that requires 1,986 BTUs, 
and the radiator with the correction factor gives us 1446 so that'll work Will's bedroom where the boiler is that requires 2561 and the radiator gives us 1826 so that don't work neither now our dressing room which is in here with the bedroom we require 1181 BTUs but the radiator gives us 1522 so one radiator so far I don't need to change the living room uh, it's quite a big living room and that requires 3,913 BTUs but we've got two radiators in there and those radiators together and minus in the correction factor gives us 4,826 so that's spot on and the hallway which is between Will's bedroom the bathroom and the spare bedroom it requires 1,489 BTUs and the radiator with the correction factor gives us 1,826 BTUs. Now, the, the boiler's been running a while and I said to my wife, which rooms do you think are not getting warm enough? And she was absolutely spot on. She knew every room which wasn't getting warm enough. So, I'm gonna need to change this radiator here I'm going to need to change the radiator in our bedroom, the radiator in Will's bedroom, the radiator in the spare bedroom, and the two towel rads we've got, one in the ensuite and one in the master bathroom, don't get it hot neither. So they're going to need to be changed. So just racking up to somebody's house, changing the boiler, and then going away with a flow rate of 55 degrees doesn't always work. Now part L of the building reg says try when you're just changing the boiler, Try and get the flow rate to 55 degrees. If you can't get to 55 degrees, then adjust the boiler if the radiators can't be changed. Now we are gonna change the radiators. We're actually gonna put under floor heating in, but that's a long way down the line. So the last thing on this video is I need to put controls on because every boiler now requires boiler plus. Now these are the controls I'm gonna be putting in. Uh, from Ariston because I am a massive believer of always fit the controls that uh, the manufacturer makes we're also putting weather comp in because we are right on the top of a big hill and it is always bloody freezing here and we also need to range rate the boiler now I've done the sizing of the heating system and our heating system requires about seven kilowatts. So I'm going to be range rating the boiler down. Well, I already have. I've range rated the boiler down to nine kilowatts. Okay, or there or thereabouts. Now, obviously when I put the controls in, we need to check it all again but that's for another video because this video has gone on long enough so hopefully you've liked the video and you got something from it and i'll catch you on the next one guys cheers